Our goal in this video is to use the wiring pi library to help us output to the GPIO header. In addition to being familiar with compiling and executing C programs, you should also be familiar with basic programming structures such as for loops. It may also be helpful to be familiar with how to control an LED in another programming language such as Python, as the circuit in this video is not discussed in detail. There are two main approaches to writing programs which involve the GPIO pins. One option is to directly access the GPIO register in the ARM CPU. This is not a trivial task and requires a good knowledge of programming in C and the ARM CPU. Another option is to import a library into our C program which provides easy to use functions. In this video, we'll use the latter, specifically the wiring pi library. We can download the wiring pi library using git. If you don't have git installed, use this command to download and install it. Once downloaded, we can test wiring pi by building a terminal GPIO utility. First, navigate to the wiring pi directory. Then execute the build file. Once the installation is complete, we can use the manual command man to understand how to use the GPIO utility. The first thing we'll try doing is setting a pin as an output pin using mode. Next, we'll want to use write to change the value of the GPIO pin between a high and a low value. In this command, we're using mode to set a pin as an output pin. The dash G indicates that we're using Broadcom pin numbering. Without the dash G, wiring pi defaults to its own pin numbering system. Here we've selected GPIO 17, which is the 11th pin on the Raspberry Pi's GPIO header. Next, we can write to the output pin, again being careful to indicate that we are using Broadcom pin numbering. In this case, we are setting GPIO 17 high, so the pin will be set to 3.3 volts. If we instead set the pin to zero, we bring the pin value down to zero volts. Now that we know that wiring pi is working, we can use it in our C programs. Among the download files, we'll find a folder with examples. The simplest of these examples is called blink.c. At the start of the program, we have two include statements, the standard input and output library and the wiring pi library. Next, for ease of reading, a constant named LED has been defined as zero. Note that this is using wiring pi pin numbering. This is the 11th pin on the GPIO header, which has a Broadcom number of 17, which is the same pin that we've used before. As I'd rather use Broadcom numbers, I'll change LED to be defined as 17. The main function follows, with void indicating that main has no parameters. The program then starts with a simple message being printed to the terminal. Here, this program is being set up for wiring pi pin numbering. As I'm using Broadcom numbering, I need to use this slightly different setup function. Next, we set the LED pin to be an output pin. What remains is a for loop which will blink the LED on and off. This for loop will run indefinitely, but I'd rather that it be of a finite length. Now the for loop will stop after five loops. To set the output pin high, we use the digital write function. We must refer to the pin number that we'd like to write to, and also give the pin a value. We can use one and zero in the place of high and low in this function. Of course, use whichever form you feel more comfortable with. We also need to include delays in between the digital write statements so that the LED can remain on or off for a brief amount of time. Here the time is in milliseconds, so the LED should blink on and off each second for a total of five seconds. Let's save the changes made to this file and head back to the terminal. We use GCC to build the program blink.c, making the output file blink. Note that we need to include the option dash L followed by wiring pi to ensure that the wiring pi library is included when blink is being compiled. Lastly, because blink accesses the GPIO pins, we need to use sudo to run the program. Let's have a look. As expected, a blinking LED. In the next lesson, we'll look at handling inputs.